In an earlier video, I told you that we can treat um, strings and ropes and chains as being uh, massless and inextensible. Um, and that was helpful in a few ways for trying to simplify the sorts of calculations that we are interested in doing on, say, an Atwood's machine. Um, you might wonder, though, um, how realistic is that? Um, can we handle situations where the string is not actually massless? So what I want to do in this video is just give you an idea about how that comes about and why it helps so much to think of the string as being massless and inextensible. So um, to begin with, let's sketch out what a heavy chain looks like. So it's going to kind of sag in the middle um, like this. And if it's a chain, then that's kind of convenient because we can consider it one link at a time. So what I'm going to do is just kind of break it up into little pieces like this. Um, and we're going to be able to think about what's happening on each individual little piece. Okay, so I'm going to pick one, and I'm going to call this one link i. Um, and then the one before it will be i minus one, and the one after it will be i, I plus one. Okay, so um, essentially this is an index that we can walk through the chain and consider from the first link all the way to the last link. And if I try to draw a free body diagram for link i, then what I'm going to get is, well, the chain has mass, and so there's going to be some gravitational force on that link, link i, um, by the Earth. Um, but that's not the only force that's on the chain, because as I've drawn it, it's in equilibrium. And so there's going to be some tension force on the link by the link to its left. So this is going to be tension on i by i minus 1. But there's also going to be some tension from the right. And so it's going to be tension on link i by i plus 1. Okay, So we're just considering the links on either side of this chain. And what I would like you to notice is that the two tensions are not the same. So if the chain is in equilibrium, if it's not moving, then because of the um, weight force that's on that chain, the tension on the right is actually going to be a little higher than the tension on the left. So the tensions are not equal. Um, and not only that, um, the magnitudes are not equal, but the angle is also not equal. Um, and so even in the situation where the chain is not moving, there's, you know, it's a fairly complicated and interesting problem. Um, if the chain were accelerating, so for instance, if this chain was attached between two train cars, for instance, and it was, so it was accelerating, um, then it would be even more complicated because then there's a net force, and so the tensions can be even different from what I drew here. So um, the sizes of the tensions are different at different points. They'll be highest near the ends of the chain and lowest in the middle. The angle changes, so it's going to be steepest right at the ends of the chain, and it'll be horizontal right in the middle. Um, and it's even more complicated if things are moving. All right, so um, if you wanted to then say, okay, well, what if we had the um, chain be essentially massless? Okay, so in the limit where the mass is really small, then what will happen is the string will hang basically level, or the chain will hang basically level. And if I consider some number of the pieces in the middle, like say here is piece i, well, if I draw a free body diagram for i, then there's no weight on it because it's massless. And so we're going to have just the tension on i by i plus one and the tension on i by i minus 1. So just the pieces of the chain on either side are going to be exerting a tension. Um, and because it's in equilibrium, the two tensions are equal. So the tension is constant throughout. Um, and even if it were accelerating, we would still be able to assume the tension was constant throughout, because if there's no mass, then there's no need for a net force. So if a chain has mass, there has to be a net force on it for it to accelerate. If the mass is infinitesimally small, then the net force needs to be infinitesimally small. So again, we can treat the tension as being constant. So um, the tension is constant, the angle is constant, and the acceleration is irrelevant if the chain is massless. Okay, so the, the case of a massive chain is something that you can study, and if you took a higher level physics course, um, that would be something that might be really interesting. If you were building a suspension bridge with steel cables, you would want to understand how the chain hangs, or how the cable hangs. Um, but um, for our purposes, we're going to always be able to assume that our strings and chains and ropes are massless and inextensible, um, and you know, we're going to just go with that and use that simplification for all the problems.